Damn, son, where'd you find this? This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Happy, happy, happy. This is Happy Hour. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or a Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Hello. Live from St. Petersburg, Florida, you are now tuned in to Hoppy Hour. Here's Ryan Hoppy. Jones. 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 Oh, yeah. This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, hanging out with you for the next hour. Leave me a voicemail. 856 856- 49 Hoppy. That's 856-494-6773. You can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com and you can tweet me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ah, so this show is heard every Thursday on ZRadioLive.com. It's on TuneIn Radio by searching Z Radio Live every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central. We also are featured on the Quad Pod Podcasting Network, QODPOD.com slash Ryan Hoppy. And beginning tomorrow, Hoppy Hour Live, the video show where I am a talking head, will be premiering on the No Filter Network. That is at nofilter.net. For just $2.99, you can watch me rant from my apartment. And for all the info... All the information, all the details on this podcast, RyanHoppyRadio.com. This podcast is for the people who wake up in the morning and grind their ass off. The people who run to their coffee pot and chug that scorching hot coffee. The people who won't give up no matter how hard life gets. The people who push their body to the limit just to get by in life. Because that's all you can do. This is Hoppy Hour. Oh, Hoppy Hot Topic! Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Jill Duggar Dillard is emphasizing the importance of community. Yeah, when you're uh, <laughs> when your brother is a pedophile, yeah, let's all communicate with each other like a community. Days after her brother, Josh Duggar, was arrested after being indicted for allegedly receiving and possessing material depicting the abuse of children, according to court documents obtained by Access Hollywood. Whoa, you're telling me somebody who acts like he is greater than thou? Whoa, you're telling me somebody who's really religious? Whoa, you're telling me someone who's very pretentious was also caught being a creep? You're telling me that when somebody has a godlike complex, that makes them into a sociopath? You're telling me that Josh Duggar, the guy who was caught on Ashley Madison, (laughs) was a creep? Whoa. (laughs) Scumbag leech. Jill is speaking out in a yeah. lengthy Instagram post about tapping into her community as awake. The post features a picture of her holding a cup of coffee in her lap, writing, quote, Whoa, you're relatable. You're drinking coffee. Wow. What about your brother? 
We were reminded this morning in church about how important community is. I think I've brought this up before, but I've literally prayed for good community. We need others for support, prayer, people to do life with, and so much more. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. You guys kept hanging out with your brother after all the years of verbal and alleged physical abuse. But now you're talking about community because he got caught. (laughs) <laughs> scumbags oh but we're gonna hide behind church and the lord that's what i hate about people like this when they get caught being scumbags they're like but we got the community the counting on star added i know this last year has tested all of us so much but sometimes it's in the difficult times that you see more clearly who your people are as they become the hands and feet of jesus this is how she's brainwashing us she goes i know this last year has been hard on all of us as if like oh yeah you know when you were having that hard time in life me too let's relate you losing your job middle class person reading this to my brother being a pedophile that we proudly helped cover up whoa and then you see who your people are as they become the hands and feet of jesus god i hate religious people like i kind of believe in something but it's like i hate when they just use the word jesus in the hands shut the fuck up She finished out her post by asking her followers, quote, do you have good community or are you in a season where you're praying for and being intentional to build community? Oh, my God. What is this community, community, community? It was an OK sitcom 10 years ago. Yeah. Sometimes it takes some work. Yeah. Like never talking to your brother again. Oh, if you guys are so about community and being together and being good people, um, make sure your brother is prosecuted to the fullest. She then asked fans what they were grateful for today. Her post comes days after she gave a statement to people regarding her brother's arrest, noting that the situation is, quote, very sad. Your brother being a pedophile is sad? That's one way to put it. Hiding behind your lawyers like the scumbag religious imbeciles you are. Her parents, Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar, shared a statement on their family's official website. Oh, they got an official website. Asking fans for, quote, continued prayers. Oh, we're so worried about the Duggars. Oh, man, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make money in life. You, person listening, are trying to figure out how you're going to make money in life. But, oh, the sociopathic scumbag religious Duggars and their narcissism. Oh, everybody's praying for us. Shut up. Quote, the accusations brought against Joshua today are very serious. Um, you don't say. It is our prayer that the truth, no matter what it is, will come to light. Yeah, that's um, one way to put it, no matter what it is, because you know he's guilty. If you believed the- oh geez, if you believed that your son was innocent, they'd be like, the truth will set you free. This will all be re- resolved in a timely manner. We love Josh and Anna and continue to pray for their family. Gross. Josh Duggar had his attorney plead not guilty on his behalf Friday as he attended a virtual hearing. Just a- Could you imagine, like, you just go, he should just have himself admit that he's guilty and save everyone's time and just be like, yeah, I'm a creep. But then it'd be, you know, not that easy. Because doesn't God not like when religious people lie? Like, isn't one of the scriptures or whatever in that book is like, uh, thou shall tell the truth before the court? Yeah. So if you're guilty, be honest. A day after being arrested on Thursday. Mm. He was arrested after being indicted for allegedly receiving and possessing material depicting the sexual abuse of children, according to court documents obtained by Access Hollywood. Burn in hell. If convicted, Josh could face up to 20 years in prison. Yeah, he's not getting convicted. Why? Because he's famous. Ah, enough of this. I'm done. I'm done, man. Oh, but God will set everybody free. Shut up. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour will be right back. Let that be trap. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I got a haircut today. A rich Keeley Master Barbershop. Oh my god, I look so good. So good I I had sex on myself earlier. 
I was like, oh yeah, this haircut. I know Rich probably doesn't appreciate that endorsement. But seriously, let me tell you about Rich Keeley, the best barber in all the Bay Area. He is at Salon Loft, right next door to McDonald's on Kennedy Boulevard. You can sign up for a haircut at richkbarber.com. And when you go in after scheduling an appointment, because you got to schedule ahead of time. Rich Keeley is a busy barber. So remember, don't forget, when you sign up for that appointment, tell them I sent you and you'll look so sexy. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Someone hook me up with a flame. I'm having a look for. Er, uh, light him up. Midwad. Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my wrist and I'm going to tore up. We shall acquire some wine on the way to the mall. And then you can get tore up. And pass out in the hot sun. That's my ball. I don't think Meatwad should be hanging around with these moon people. Listen to Hoppy Hour by searching Hoppy Radio on your favorite podcasting platform. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Mark Wahlberg is showing off his new dad bod. Oh yeah, Mark Wahlberg has a body of an average Joe. He's got this quote-unquote dad bod. I love when the celebrities that would have 1% body fat are like, Oh my god, I got 9% body fat. I'm fat. <laughs> Shut up. Mark Wahlberg is showing off his new dad bod. Yeah. I can't even lose the weight. I've been gaining weight. Found King. Okay, He's got nothing there. I'm looking at my gut. I'm disgusting. What? That's a dad bod? If that is a dad bod, I see why everybody's unhappy. Shut up. Right here. Transformation. The TED actor revealed his dramatic weight gain on Instagram, saying he gained 20 pounds in just three weeks. He shared a... Oh, just 20 pounds. Oh, you're such a fat-ass Mark Wahlberg. Oh, I just had a stroke there. (laughs) Oh, Mark Wahlberg, you're such a fat-ass. Fat-ass. Shocking before and after picture of himself that showed the changes side by side. Are we just going to overlook the fact that I had a hard time saying the word stroke and it sounded like I was having a stroke? (laughs) Oh, man, I'm a weird guy. I'm a weird man. He shared a shocking before and after picture of himself that showed the changes side by side. So he went from 0% body fat to 8% body fat. Whoa, how are you going to survive, Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> Loser. Mark clarified that the extra weight is all for a new role. He recently caught up with Access Hollywood's Mario Lopez just before he started the process. Mm-hmm. After this week, I get to start trying to put on as much weight as possible for the role that I'm playing. So I think uh, that'll be fun for a couple of weeks until I, I eat myself into sickness. But i um, looking forward to it. I want to get... Oh, no, you're going to look like the everyday average Joe that goes to watch your movies. How are you going to survive, Mark? Get some recommendations for some great re- recipes and, mm-hmm. and the way that I can pack on the pounds as quick as possible. I mean, remember, like... 11 years ago when the guy from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia gained all that weight and he got legitimately fat. Okay, that was him being legitimately fat. But Mark Wahlberg can relax. You're a millionaire. You can lose that weight in two seconds. Shut up. Wahlberger's co-owner is usually slim and trim. He says he has yet another 20 pounds to gain. Oh, no. And family are a big part of the dad's life. 
Man, can you just imagine like how out of touch he is that he thinks even if he gains 20 more pounds that he's fat? The departed actor owns his own nutrition and training companies and shares his own journey online. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the pandemic, people are going to really put an, info, uh, an emphasis on, on health and wellness and prevention is obviously yeah. better than cure. It's and I can't relate to any of it because I have access to all the supplements and regimens that no one else can get. <laughs> I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I was in the atrociously amazing movie known as Max Payne. So what better way to prevent uh, sickness, illness than to just eat healthy and exercise? And yeah, wow, what a concept. Eating healthy and exercise leads to preventing illnesses. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pump the brakes. Hang out with me for a second. You're telling me, Mark, that when you eat healthy and work out, you're going to live longer? <laughs> Call the press is breaking news. Working out and eating better leads to a better life. Whoa! We got the fitness guru known as Mark Wahlberg with the groundbreaking advice. Jesus Christ. Now, can you Venmo me some money so I can afford the amazing regimens you have, a buddy boy? And, you know, and kind of live that, that, that kind of a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How does he stay focused in the gym and on the job? I don't know, looking at his bank account. He told Mario, it's all about putting in the effort. And the money, 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 money. Listen, listen. If he was just making $40,000 to be on some hack, let's say, action movie on the uh, service known as Crackle or something that nobody watches, like a Peacock movie, he wouldn't be doing it. But when you're making millions, you can be fat all you want. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Here comes the money. This clip from Family Guy reminds me of Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> My God, that's amazing. You are so talented. Huh? Wait a second. Something's not right here. Yeah. You were just making it look like you were playing. You're oh, wow. a phony. Mm -hmm. Hey, this guy's a great big phony. That's right. You're a big fat phony. Hey, you know who lives in this house? A great big phony! That's right! A phony lives here! A big fat phony! Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy! This is Hoppy Hour! Hoppy Hour will be right back. Oh yeah. Another unlicensed hip hop beat! Let the beat drop, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Oh no. The world's ending. How's Dogecoin doing? Well, I can let you know how you can find out all about Dogecoin. Go to DogecoinDirect.com. The official sponsor with all the Dogecoin info you ever need. You go there. You can learn. Adam on Twitter too, Dogecoin Direct. Dogecoin Direct. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Like a uh, $9,000 prostitute, please. Oh, do you have nine $1,000 ones? Yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. In uh, like 20 minutes, I'm going to be asleep, so get them up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. He never holds back, and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too.
Oh, <laughs> I can't. I can't stop myself from laughing because this next headline is so predictable. According to new alleged screenshots, Khloe Kardashian reached out to Instagram model Sydney Chase, aka the woman who claims she recently had a fling with Tristan Thompson. Mm-hmm. Let's get into it. Uh, Last week, we reported that during an appearance on the No. Oh yeah, Tristan gets into a lot, <laughs> and Khloe thinks he loves her for some reason. Let's get into it. Okay. Last week, we reported that during an appearance on the No Jumper podcast... Which, is- essentially, the No Jumper podcast is just all the alleged side chicks just whoring out all the celebrities that they sleep with. Instagram model Sydney Chase revealed that she was seeing Tristan Thompson starting in November 2020. Like, that was when Chloe thought he was being faithful, which I have no idea why Chloe thought Tristan was even capable of being faithful. Once a cheater, always a cheater. And the second thing is this. Chloe has no confidence in herself because she thinks the only man she can ever get is him for some reason. (laughs) And I literally said, are you single? Oh, geez. Yes. Okay. We can talk. (gasps) We talked. We hung out multiple times. It happened. Let me hear that. And then I found out. (laughs) I don't care how good looking you are. That voice laying next to you. Oh, God. I bet you'd say the same thing about my Midwest twang. Okay, we can talk. We can bang. Uh, we can talk. Yeah. We talked. We hung out multiple times. We can talk about DogecoinDirect.com. It happened. Let me hear And then I talk. found out that he was not single, and I cut him off. Oh, yeah. You had... No clue at all that he was in a relationship because these side chicks would never bang somebody to then have clout. Like, if you found out he was in a relationship, you so would have said no. Fans know that Tristan and Khloe Kardashian were supposedly back together at that point after years of turmoil and cheating scandals. Oh, it sounds like a healthy relationship. Oh, yeah, after years of turmoil. <laughs> what a fun life. And after the No Jumper interview went viral and made headlines, Sydney hopped on TikTok to double down on her claims. Yeah, double down, baby. We covered that in another clever video, which is linked above. Mm-hmm. She went into detail about the first time they met and the last time she and Tristan spoke. And this TikTok completely blew up and got over 2 million views. Whoa. <laughs> first met November, November 11th, to be exact. And that's when everything started. Yeah, he pulled on his pants or whatever. However, you have sex. I have sex. I know how to relate. And then the last time we had contact, besides when he messaged me after finding out about the interview, it was the day after his daughter's birthday party. Oh, yeah. Completely throw him under the bus. (laughs) Like these side chicks, they have literally... Not that they don't have class, but they literally are just willing to throw you under the bus. You have a good time, you bang them on, and they just throw you under the bus. They just go, bye-bye. Here I am, throwing you under the bus, bitch. Try not to get run over. Yeah, we had a good time. You banged me out. I'm going to throw you right under the bus. Tell Chloe I said hi. And then Chloe's like, wait, you're telling me that Tristan cheated? No way. The guy who banged my half-sister's best friend while we were married or in a relationship? Whoa. I mean, who would have saw this? Coming, an NBA player cheating again after they've cheated multiple times. I hate it. <laughs> it's great. True's birthday party was in April. So according to Sydney, she and Tristan were in touch as recently as a few weeks ago. That's one way to put it. They were in touch with each other. Oh, they were so in touch. Yeah. They weren't as close though when he put on the condom. <laughs> And while Tristan and Chloe haven't spoken out publicly about Sydney's cheating claims, aside from some cryptic quotes on Chloe's page, Chloe put up. Apparently, all right. Let me re- rewind. She put up a meme. If you have been brutally broken but 
still have the courage to be gentle to others and you deserve love deeper than the ocean itself, then dump him immediately. You keep going back to him. Page. Apparently, Chloe reached out to Sydney for a private chat. Oh, that sounds healthy. I'm just going to reach out to the woman that ruined my relationship again. Oh, that's going to end well. Uh, let's reach out. <laughs> what? On her Instagram stories, Sydney shared these screenshots of her lock screen with alleged DMs from Chloe. The stories have been reposted to the shade room and fans can see that Sydney scribbled out the majority of the text, but she left the part of Chloe's message that said, Hey, yeah, if you were so cool, Sydney, and you had any integrity, which you don't, you would have kept all the texts in, but you know that you're a phony. I'm just saying. Hey, Sydney, this is mm-hmm. Chloe. And there was another follow-up message that reads, I would appreciate if our conversation can remain confidential. This has to be the writers in the writing room of the Kardashians telling her to reach out. Because why the hell would a side chick that most likely knew that he was hanging out with Chloe, why the hell would you reach out to her thinking she's not going to tell everybody that you DM'd her? What? With a prayer hands emoji. Sydney hasn't posted about the matter again. Yeah, because she's going to have lawsuits. She puts the ass in class. Since, and Chloe and Tristan have still remained silent. Yeah, this is awkward. You know how I feel the worst for? True. Her daddy's a scumbag, and her mom needs more confidence. Fans, however, have been weighing in with their thoughts on the whole matter, sharing their thoughts on Sydney's screenshots. Mm -hmm. One person wrote, at this point, Chloe needs to leave Tristan. He will never change. He was never going to change. We're acting like there was a chance he was going to change. What? Another fan called out Sydney for sharing the messages, writing, quote, it's the asking for confidentiality and then ending up on the shade room for me. Well, yeah, she's a side chick. What do you expect her to be a noble person with dignity? <laughs> what is this thing where we think like, okay, it's fine. They had consensual sex, whatever. But I love all these people that are like, oh, an NBA side chick threw somebody under the bus. She hooked up with him for attention. Who the hell knew who Sydney was before? And I'm hoping it doesn't come off sexist, but these girls, they're, they're like Instagram models. They're like one of a million. But, oh, you banged Tristan Thompson. Now you're famous. Now you're on the No Jumper podcast. I'm just saying. This person agreed, saying, LMFAO. Well, there goes the confidential part. Mm -hmm. This person chimed in, writing, Chloe, at this point, let that man go. Yeah, too bad she had a kid with him. Not like that it's, let me... Think about how to say that. One, two, three, four. All right. Is it good that she's a mother and has a kid in the world? Yes. Should it have been with somebody else? Uh, with somebody else other than Tristan? Probably. Oh, there I am, covering my ass from this politically correct world. Happy, happy, happy. This is happy hour. <sighs> I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. Happy hour will be right back. But I'm right here. Hanging out with you. Yeah. This following segment was brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts. When I tell you that Amir Academy of Martial Arts is the best in the Bay, I'm a man of my words. 2700 22nd Street North in St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah, in St. Pete, Florida. 727-821-4097. That's 727-821-4097. All the info. AmerAcademy.com. Happy, happy, happy. This is Happy Hour. I got PhDs in four scientific disciplines. Really? Why do you think they call me Dr. Quinn? Um, I just thought that was a nickname. You know, like Dr. Dre. East Side. Go. 
God, you're stupid. Hey, shut your hat. Drive. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Is your significant other driving you nuts? The self-proclaimed expert Ryan Hoppy will listen to your problems at 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-49-HOPPY. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Huzzah! After 13 months of closure, Disneyland finally reopened its doors. Which I love how uh, the whole world is like, woo! Watch out. Yeah, woo! America's opening up. <laughs> Florida's like, yeah, we've been doing that since day one. Meant a bunch of tears, a bunch of people wildly running through the gates, and of course, a bunch of losers, if you ask me. I mean, these tickets oh are good, Matt. <laughs> Stop! What an entitled douchebag at TMZ. Heaven forbid the people that don't live in mansions that are living in small apartments paint two thousand a month an apartment you can get for seven hundred in Cleveland. Heaven forbid they feel a little excitement to leave the house. Stop it! All the adults and kids alike were so excited to be back at their happy place. Mm-hmm. Okay, we didn't see many pictures of kids, but let those ear wearers be happy. It is kind of weird. Like, my girlfriend's a huge Disney nerd, but it's very endearing. But there's some of those Disney nerds where you're like, oh my god, what are you doing? Relax. Relax. Then here I am doing a podcast that's a radio show. So maybe you should relax. <laughs> And maybe my neighbors will hopefully never call the cops because of my loud ranting at 7.30 at night. <laughs> just saying. Happy. Uh, listen, no war's ended, so let's tone it down just a little bit. Are you guys saying that there's nothing that made you emotional about coming out of the pandemic? I got emotional, emotional about when I got to hug my grandma for the first time. Not when I got- there's no emotions when you're working at TMZ because you're a soulless sociopath that ruins lives for a... T- so I don't expect them to relate to anybody. To go on, like, Mickey's Wild Ride. You're exploiting people, so you're gonna, like, you know, not have emotions? Whoa. Okay, first off, it's called Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, Mr. Big Shot. Mm-hmm. And secondly... Take up. Choosing. Yeah, you, yeah, you also get emotional every time Batman... All right, I can't take these TMZ people. They just get on my nerves. They get on my nerves. Drives me nuts, man. I sit here, I try to give them publicity because TMZ, how the hell would they survive without me playing them? Mm. Okay, so we knew the ladies of Destiny's Child were still close, but Kelly Rowland just took that closeness to a whole new level we didn't even know was possible. What, she made a new hit and is relevant? She revealed that Beyonce and Michelle were actually on a Zoom call with her when she gave birth earlier this year. Let's get into this. <laughs> so I have a theory that whenever you do a Zoom call or any of those uh, like Microsoft Teams or Facebook video, I feel like they saved the video. So can you imagine being a creep in the office? You're like, oh, yeah, there's somebody sexting. Oh, there's some comedians talking. Oh, the birth. <laughs> It's no secret that Kelly Rowland has stayed close with her former Destiny's Child bandmates. Oh, I'm sure she has no jealousy at all, Beyonce. Beyonce and Michelle frequently appear on Kelly's social media pages. Mm-hmm. And Kelly's also super close with Beyonce's mom, Tina Knowles, who she indeed. Whoa, it's like they're trying so hard to be relevant. Hearingly calls Mama T. And so when Kelly gave birth in January of this year, she said she couldn't imagine it without her family there. Last month on The Ellen Show, Kelly explained that it's always been important for her community to support each other at their births. Mm -hmm. But due to COVID, they had to get creative this time around. Last time when I had Titan, like my Uh family was in there, you know, and this time they weren't. And 
you know, everybody was feeling a way about that because we like to, you know, be at each other's births. And so. Yeah. Yeah, we got to Zoom. And oh, weird. Now, in a new interview with People TV, Kelly revealed exactly how that worked logistically. Because I don't know. You set up a camera and you go, whoa, the baby coming out. As a Zoom birth obviously comes with some questions. Yeah, Actually, don't say. a lot of questions. Oh, hey, how do you want this? You want this over the shoulder? You know, I can do whatever you want. Got and it. when Kelly was asked exactly who was in attendance, she revealed that her sisters, a.k.a. Beyonce and Michelle, were two of the people on that very special Zoom call. Well, you know, my sisters and my mama T and mm-hmm. my husband's mother. Wow, I cannot imagine having anyone watch me give birth, especially on live stream. But- I remember. I don't think you could do this now, but I remember like 10 years ago, I was in health class and they just showed a video of like a woman giving birth. And I was just like, ah! uh, whatever makes you happy. Additionally, Kelly revealed whether or not Bay and Michelle have met her son Noah in person yet and mm-hmm. what kind of bands they are. Oh, they're awesome. 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 Mm. They met him immediately. <laughs> Kelly added that is. All right. I need to like wash my hands after this segment. Ugh, what's Meghan Markle doing? Meghan Markle can officially add children's book author to her impressive resume. Yes, I should have great resume of ruining a family and being a hack actress. Oh, a round of applause to you. <laughs> what? The 39-year-old Duchess of Sussex has written her first children's book. Titled- Holy midlife crisis. I want to leave some legacy behind besides ruining a family. Titled The Bench. Megan's literary debut is... Yeah, that's where you were sitting at all the events. On the bench. (laughs) Enough of this. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. Here's a walk a flock of like beat. Unlicensed on SoundCloud. You will. You will. Got one, got one, got one, got one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by FitsAgeFitness.com. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best workout trainer in all the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. You see how I'm really hyper and alive today? It's because I worked out with him and DJ Biz. Here's all the info. If you live in the Tampa Bay area, go to fitsagefitness.com and fit underscore sage underscore fitness on Instagram. Meal prep, meal plans rather. He's not just going to give you the food. You got to go out there and get it. But he'll have meal plans, workout regimens, and more. And he's got an app coming out real soon, so you know he's legit. But listen. If you're listening in a different city, don't freak out. Don't worry. You can do virtual workouts and more. But you got to make it happen, Captain. You can't just sit here and listen to my podcast and think it's just going to magically happen. FitzHFitness.com Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. What are you looking at? Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt! You make me sick, you big baby! Whoa, hey! <laughs> oh, hey, hey! It's, uh, I mean, it's like a koala bear crapped a rainbow in my brain! <laughs> oh, happy Hot Topic! Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, uh, what the hell is going on with Kim Kardashian? Uh, oh, man, these Kardashians always have drama. 
yeah, I feel like a loser, you know? Kim Carter. Don't say that about yourself, Kim. You're totally not a loser. Trust me, we know that. Yeah, I feel like a loser, no. you know? Kim Kardashian is getting candid about how she's feeling about her divorce from Kanye West. In the mid-season trailer for Keeping Up with the Kardashians' final season, the beauty mogul got highly emotional in front of her family, appearing to be speaking about the split. Oh, wow. Yeah, I feel like a loser, you know? Well, if you feel like a loser, you're just talking yourself down. I just want you to be happy and joyful. Yeah, and I'm ready too. Last month, a source told ET the reality star is adjusting to her new life amid her divorce from the rapper. Sharing. I can't even imagine what she was thinking getting into the relationship with Kanye. Like, was this going to end well? I'm just saying, you marry Kanye West? <laughs> oh, that's just going to end. <laughs> Happily ever after that Kim has been doing her best to surround herself with her family and good friends, be social, go out, and take care of her children. Yeah, but the thing is, like, when I got dumped, I was able to go out and about and no one knew who I was. It's a little harder for her to go out and be social. Quote, she is focused on making sure her kids are taken care of and protected, mm -hmm. but she is definitely still getting used to her new norm. Yeah, like she should be happy. She doesn't have to deal. Well, I mean, she does have to deal with Kanye, but like he's gone in a way. It's a different experience for sure. Meanwhile, also in the new tease, Kim is weighing in on her sister Courtney's relationship with her ex and the father of her three kids, Scott Disick. Oh, yeah, that's sociopathic imbecile. Think about all the times he's had. Big change hasn't been positive for him. The former couple goes on to... Why should you have to bow down to Scott Disick and hope that he approves of the change? Sounds like a creep. ...have an intense conversation about their relationship while... Please, Scottis, accept the fact that we're divorced and I'm banging Travis Barker. Please don't do anything. ...lying in bed together. Mm. I'm not going to be made to feel guilty when... Weird. Heaven forbid I have sex with other people while you're banging women half your age. The things that I've asked of you haven't been done. In the latest episode... Like, the one thing I asked of you was, leave me alone. ...go to keeping up with the Kardashians, Scott admitted he gets super jealous when court dates other people. Weird. Heaven forbid they move on. Like it annoys me like when you flirt with this lifeguard. Yeah. I'm definitely not flirting with the lifeguard. All right, maybe I'm it's banging them. It's just in my head, like seeing you around any guy bothers me. Creepy. Around another human that I'm not flirting with. Oh, geez, I'm just banging. Maybe it's just something. I don't that voice, he's really got that like serial killer vibe. Like, yeah, heaven forbid you talk to anybody else. Around any guy. Yeah. Hey, you can't talk to any guy, okay? Because I am just. Such a real wind of emotions and fun. When you think of somebody with a lot of talent and personality, you think of Scott Desick and that dumb Los Angeles entitled brat voice. Bothers me. Around another human that I'm not flirting with? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just something. I don't know. I feel like you're like a little flirty or you're like, I'm oh. not. I promise. Yeah, she's a Kardashian. Then it's my insecurity that I feel like. Yeah. You got small dick energy, bro. Like that I just don't like seeing you with another guy. Okay. It hurt me when you were with somebody else. Scott is currently dating 19-year-old model Amelia Hamlin. Which he's just a walking midlife crisis banging all these 19-year-olds, which is fine. But like any dude would want to live your life that's like 38. But oh, I want to have Courtney who doesn't respect me at all. What a sociopathic imbecile. And Courtney is getting very serious with Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker. Yeah, he's laying that pipe. Such a dream come true. A yeah. source told E.T. last... He's actually got a personality and talent. ...last month that Scott was still getting used to her new and very public relationship with the musician. Why should we have to wait for him to get used to it? She's gone. Like, I know it does hurt to think about your ex banging somebody else until you date somebody new that replaces that thought... But, like, I don't know, man. 
And while the co-parents are still very close, the source adds that their relationship is different now. Yeah, they're not having sex anymore. And maybe you shouldn't be as close. Just have them drop off the kid, you know? Maybe not have them on your TV show. As long as you keep having them on the show, he ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Just saying. Quote, having Courtney and Travis get so serious has been an adjustment for Scott. Oh no, how's Scott doing? Is he okay? We're so worried. He is still trying to get used to it. Scott mm. is still close with Courtney, but things between them have changed a bit. Yeah, the they're not married anymore. They got a divorce. They're no longer having intercourse. Of course things got different. Two have been able to maintain a friendship and co-parent together over the years, mm. and that is something Scott opened up to E.T. about back in 2019. Like a creep. I mean, I think you just got to figure out really what's important to you at the end of the day. I mean, do you hear this guy? He's out of his mind. At the end of the day, I mean, you just want to be happy. Yeah. So with that logic, at the end of the day, you just want to be happy. If your ex-wife is happy with Travis Barker, let it happen, you creep. <sighs> what the hell's going on with Pierce Morgan, that talentless hack? Pierce Morgan is lashing out at celebrities again. The former Good Morning Britain host posted a rant on Twitter Tuesday, telling celebrities to, quote, get a grip, writing... What do you think he's like behind closed doors? He is so quick to rip into everybody else it makes you wonder what the hell's going on with his life and what type of porn he's watching because you know he's got a deep dark secret writing is there any danger of a celebrity giving an interview in which they don't play the victim but actually tell us how grateful they are to be hugely successful rich and famous the woe so he's essentially just going can someone please interview me because i'm rich successful and famous was me crap is so disingenuous and so utterly exhausting just get a grip all of you it's un i hate it that i kind of agree with him all every celebrity's like i want to be a victim i want to be a victim but like it's kind of cool that you're famous and rich Clear Pierce was referring to a specific interview, but this isn't the first time he's lashed out at celebrities. Mm -hmm. He has previously called out several stars like Taylor Swift, Idris Elba, Sam Smith, and Megan. He talks about everybody else because he is unhappy inside and knows that he's a talentless hack. That's what happens. All these famous people that have semi talent, like him, Wendy Williams. Whenever they have to talk about other people, it's because they're insecure inside and they're mentally ill. <laughs> Meghan Markle. Following her and Prince Harry's explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey in March, Pierce took to Twitter to share his reaction to Meghan's admission that the UK press was so punishing with their character assassination of her that she contemplated suicide. Pierce tweeted, quote, I wouldn't believe Meghan Markle if she gave me a weather report. Oh, because you're such a trustworthy and believable guy, Pierce. We all need to bow down to your greatness of being a hack that couldn't even replace Larry King's hair. <laughs> all right, enough of you. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour will be right back. Yeah. Oh, sure. This following segment was brought to you by the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company at TampaBayHotSauce.com. When I tell you they are the best hot sauce in the whole universe, I'm a man of my words. When you go to TampaBayHotSauce.com, it has all the locations of where you can purchase their hot sauce in Florida. But if you're listening in a different city, you can also... Order it online. And when you go to TampaBayHotSauce.com, they also have recipes so you can spice it up. And when you do cook that nice, amazing meal after hearing about the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company on my award-winning podcast, tag us at Tampa Bay Hot Sauce, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and let us know what you cook up. Hoppy, 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 this is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy's mind is like a circus. And you're all invited. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. His Midwest accent and rants are like endorphins for your workout. You are listening to Hoppy Hour. Well, 
It was good while it lasted, I guess. <laughs> but, Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Fella found an even older glory hole two towns over. Lord knows I ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about this. Such an elegant concept. A simple, lowly hole to commemorate his glory. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Melinda Gates announced they're splitting up after 27 years of marriage. No! How am I going to survive without knowing these billionaires are married or not married anymore? Now their daughter Jennifer is opening up about how the decision is affecting their family. Um, I bet a little bit. So what would you would you go out with me, you know, two weeks from Friday night? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, two weeks from Friday night? I said, that wasn't really that spontaneous enough for me. Maybe call me closer to the date. And so I gave him my phone number, and he called me two hours later at home. He said, well, I have two things I have to go to tonight, but then could you go out with me for a drink? And I said, well, I guess that's a little more spontaneous, so I ended okay. up going out with him. Bill and Melinda have been married since January 1994 wow. and share three children together. 21-year-old mm -hmm. Rory, 18-year-old Phoebe, and 25-year-old Jennifer. And on Monday, they revealed they're calling it quits by releasing a joint statement. Quote, over the last 27 years, we have raised three incredible children and built a foundation that works all over the world to enable all people to lead healthy, productive lives. We continue to share a belief in that mission and will continue our work together at the foundation. But we know. Oh, thank God that the billionaires are on a mission. Oh, you are so impressive the way you have to let everybody know that you're on a mission. Oh, thank God. Let's bow down to your greatness. We help out the world and we have to let everybody know. Because we can't just do it anonymously. We're on a mission to be better than everybody else. Because deep down, we're sad inside. You need proof. Our marriage just ended. I'm just saying, look at us. We're helping out the world. Look, shut up. We no longer believe we can grow together as a couple in this next phase of our lives. Mm -hmm. According to court documents obtained by ET, the two have a separation contract and are asking for the court to divide their debts and liabilities, real property and personal property, as set forth in the separation contract. Got it. The documents also state that their marriage is, quote, irretrievably broken. <laughs> no spousal support is being requested and they're... Yeah, they're almost like 80. Who cares? Court date is set for April 4th, 2022. The former couple launched the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in 2000. Its main goals are enhancing health care, reducing poverty across the globe. And we got to let everybody know. And expanding educational opportunities and access to information technology. In All right, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Don't care. Oh, my God. Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott hung out for his birthday. And you know, that was a naughty time. Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott had a parents' night out. I love it. And E.T. has new details on what went down inside the rapper's birthday bash. They're better co-parents than uh, Courtney and Scott. Over the weekend in Miami, Kylie was on hand to help Travis celebrate his 29th B-Day at the... Quarter Life Crisis! ...city's iconic hotel, The Fountain Blue. The makeup mogul shared these videos to her Instagram story, living it up inside the club. Yeah, they're so relatable, the way they get VIP access to Miami. 
And E.T. has learned not only did Travis perform, he was also the party's DJ. And there is not one mask to be seen, and who cares anymore? Yeah. A source tells us Kylie was seated behind the DJ booth, which allowed Travis to chat with her throughout the party. That's one way to put it. I'm going to chat with you. The source adds that Kylie and Travis were visibly together and definitely seemed to enjoy each other's company. (laughs) This latest sighting follows new details we learned about Kylie and Travis's relationship status. I don't feel any different, but it's, it's fun. In February, a source told ET they still act like they're an item. And along with daughter Stormy, the trio are relatively inseparable for the most part. Yeah, the way they act like an item. Oh, yeah. Grab the condom because I know your pullout game is not the best. (laughs) Naveen, why did you unmatch me? It's me. Ben Affleck just went viral on TikTok after an influencer shared a video that the actor allegedly sent her on a dating app. Oh my God. Here's what went down. Influencer Naveen J recently shared this clip on TikTok. What's her talent though? That's Naveen looking totally bummed out, explaining that she unmatched what she thought was a fake Ben Affleck account on the exclusive dating app, Raya. Oh, that's the one where, like, millionaires bang each other out. <laughs> up in the morning, thinking about so many things. I just wish things would get better. I'm trying to get rid of All righty, enough of that. So uh, they probably ended up banging. Britney Spears is letting her thoughts be known about the recent documentaries about her life, and she's even taking aim at the media for highlighting her traumatic past. Let's- oh, but I thought the free Britney movement and, and the media now cared about her. <laughs> you bunch of hypocritical imbeciles. Let's get into it. Just on the heels of Britney Spears' upcoming trial, where she's set to speak for the first mm. time in court regarding her ongoing conservatorship, dun, dun, dun. she took to Instagram to address the many unauthorized documentaries released that shed light on her traumatizing past. And kind of make light of it in a way. On Monday, Brit shared a video of herself dancing alongside a lengthy Instagram caption. She starts off explaining why this year is already shaping up to be much better than last year. She said, quote, so many documentaries about me this year with other people's takes on my life. Yeah, what- that was the problem. Everybody's like, we know everything about Britney from an unauthorized source. What can I say I'm deeply flattered? These documentaries. No, you're not are so hypocritical. They criticize the media and then do the same thing. Brit went on. Hell yeah, Brittany. Hoppy. Hop. Did, I mean, did not mean to press that. You go out there and say what you need to say. Just saying. To remind fans that although I've had some pretty tough times in my life, I've had way more amazing times in my life. And she also noted that the world always seems to be much more interested in the negative. Adding, quote, why highlight the most negative and traumatizing times in my life from forever ago? I mean, damn. She then quickly changed subjects to share with fans another dancing video and give an update. All right, before I go, I got a message for you. For all you free Britneyers out there, all you Gen Zs that are making money off of merchandise and podcasts, all you celebrity news reporters that now are caring about Britney Spears' health, her mental health for some reason, if you truly care about her mental health, quit covering her and leave her alone. That's the solution. But until then, shut up. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. And like that, he's gone.